Hello, world history students. This is Mr. Everton, and this is a video all about capitalism, communism, and socialism. We've been talking about the Industrial Revolution, which is a time period when um, people began to um, work in factories, in cities, um, and that generated a lot of wealth. And then, you know, as part of that, there were responses to the way that wealth was being generated and some of the um, unfair things that were happening. So I'll unpack that here in a minute. Capitalism is an economic system. We're talking about three different economic systems, right? Ways that money is um, created and distributed in society. So capitalism is the idea that um, private businesses own, like private owners, private people, individuals own products and businesses, and they have they get complete control over those things. And it focuses on competition between products and companies, right? Like Wendy's and McDonald's both sell fast food and they're competing with each other to try to get you to buy their fast food. And so that incentivizes them, that motivates them to try to do a good job, right? Like if McDonald's is selling terrible food, then Wendy's is going to make a lot more money. And if Wendy's has like, starts making people sick because they, I don't know, they use contaminated meat or something, everybody's gonna go to McDonald's. So the idea is that competition is gonna make McDonald's try to do better and it's gonna make Wendy's try to do better. And then you as a consumer will like get better fast food because these companies want your money. So industry uses capitalism and we've been talking about the growth of industry. Um, the idea here is that capitalism and competition between different inventors and different businessmen um, helped to fuel the industrial revolution. It made people, um, people realize they could generate wealth by um, trying to come up with new ideas and try to come up with better ideas that would get them to earn, that would help them to earn money. And so that helped to create wealth and it did increase the standard of living. When we say increases the standard of living, we mean it like made people's lives a little bit better, made people's lives a little bit easier. But it only did that for some people. It didn't do it for everyone. Um, cap competition, I just kind of said this, competition motivates entrepreneurs to create businesses. So an entrepreneur is somebody who takes a risk, who, um, who borrows money or uses their money in order to create a business. And they also have to put in a whole bunch of work in order to do that. But when they do, and when they're successful and the business works, that creates jobs for people. And that creates wealth for people too, right? So they, they get a job and they have money that they can pay their bills with and support their family. The entrepreneur um, and the stockholders and the company will get wealth that they'll be able to use um, to you know, buy things and that'll help the economy to grow. Capitalism follows what we call the laws of supply and demand, which means that if people in a country want things, they demand it, right? If there's a desire to have these certain things, then the supply will rise to meet it. Um, that businesses will try to meet the demands that people have. And, and if the demand starts to go down, then the supply will go down accordingly. Um, a good thing about capitalism, you know, it's not simple, right? It's, there's good things and bad things. A good thing about capitalism is that it has helped the middle class to grow. When we talk about middle class people, we're talking about people who aren't wealthy, but who aren't poor, who can get the things that they need, who are able to think about things other than like where their next meal is coming from. And they're able to have some free time and sort of like, you know, have like, have a good life. Um, if we, nobody invented capitalism, but sort of like the person who is most associated with capitalism is this guy, Adam Smith, who was from Scotland, which is located north of England in Great Britain. And the reason why people talk about him is because he wrote this very important book called The Wealth of Nations, in which he outlined many of the um, basic ideas and concepts of capitalism. Now, a bad thing about capitalism is that it does lead to an unequal distribution of wealth in society. If capitalism is all about competition, well, in a competition, there's gonna be winners and there's gonna be losers. And so you end up with people who are incredibly wealthy and you end up with people who don't have enough. And it's unfair, like it just is. Capitalism works that way. So that's a problem. And you know, we talked in our recent lesson about um, child labor laws and the way that children were exploited by factory workers. And there are a lot of other problems with capitalism. It wasn't just children who were being exploited. And there was this economist who, um, you know, which is an economist is a person who studies the economy. 
and they saw that capitalism was unjust, that it wasn't benefiting everybody, that it was benefiting some people more than others. And so they tried to address this. The guy's name is Karl Marx. So he, he like invented communism. He's from Germany, which is in Central Europe, North Italy. And um, he and his friend Friedrich Engels wrote um, the Communist Manifest Manifesto and Das Kapital, which outlined the basic concepts of communism, which you've probably heard of before. Communism is an economic system that says there should be no private ownership of business, that government should own all businesses and own all land, and that like individuals should not own those things. Um, communism believes that an economy should try to redistribute wealth so that all people get the same amount. That, you know, the, the government takes all the money from everybody and that just redistributes it, redistributes it equally so that everybody gets the same. And what's good about that is that, you know, it eliminates any gap between rich people and poor people. It makes it so that, um, you know, like, the rich person who is spending insane amounts of money on things they don't really need, you know, they don't need that stuff. But, you know, this poor person over here who's struggling to get enough food to eat and pay their rent and doesn't want to be homeless, well, now, like, that disparity is gone and everybody is treated equally, right? I mean, that sounds like a good thing to me. What's bad about this is that the citizens are strongly controlled by the government. The government is making all the decisions, the government has all the power, and it really does have a tendency to limit people's um, individualism and their ability to make individual choices. So it's not possible to have pure capitalism with 0% government control. And it's equally not possible to have pure communism with 100% government control. Those things do not exist in the real world. Um, those are concepts that, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of government control. There's always going to be individuals who are making decisions. And so the question becomes like, how much control should government have? over the economy you know where do you where do you like place the line on the spectrum and one sort of compromise position is called socialism a lot of times people um, think that socialism and communism mean the same thing and they don't socialism believes that some private property is good and that people should be able to own businesses and and that that is good and that that will generate wealth but that the government should heavily tax rich people that, um, you know, in order to um, make the, you know, the country run smoothly, we need to tax rich people a lot. And that's, you know, some people think that's a great idea and some people don't. Some people say if you tax rich people a whole lot, well, then they're not going to be as incentivized to create new businesses. Other people say, well, you know, the only reason why somebody like Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or whoever is able to create a successful business is because they're living in a country that provides them with all of these things they need, like roads and the mail and electricity and all of these things that are an organized education, right, educated workers, all of these things that you need in order to run a business, like they got to pay for that. Um, Socialism also believes that the government should provide social programs like free health care and free college. So the United States is not a socialist country, clearly, because we do not have free health care or free college. But there are aspects of the United States that do have some, you know, there do have some socialism going on. Like the fact that you get free public schooling from kindergarten through 12th grade is a socialist kind of a thing. Like the government is providing a, a program for you. The fact that we have social security for older people when they need to retire. That is a form of like socialism. And socialism isn't like a bad thing. It's like a question that we all have to sort of like think about, like how much do we want the government involved in our economy and how much do we want the government involved in our lives? Um, thanks for watching. Make sure you answer the summary question and I'll talk to you in class.